Hey, this is Jerry Visca, the publisher of Definers, and welcome to the Top 50 Health and Wellness Tips issue, and we are live with Tosca Reno. You know, in your profile, Tosca, I love how you share that health and wellness is our birthright, and it's for all of us. So share with us, why did you choose a path through health and wellness? Well, I believe that uh, there are overpowering needs to address wellness on a global scale because we can look around us on any given day and see that the system is broken and see that the knowledge isn't there and see that maybe we've been misled, seduced by uh, the food corporations, etc. And that's why we've landed here. I certainly know that's what happened to me. Uh, my own personal experience uh, being obese at a given point in my life and then making changes. I watched my father die of heart disease. Um, you know, I remember even then being angry with the system because we were told that he had to eat this plastic, you know, margarine garbage. And now all that falls away and you're left with this kernel of, but I know if that we went back to eating and taking care of ourselves in a way that's traditional to who we are as human beings, we wouldn't be in that position. So, you know, my why for working in health and wellness is because I know I can make change for people. I can help people today, right now, make a difference in their lives because I've been through it. I love that. I love that your why is so filled with passion. Tosca, you share an insight and I love it. It goes like this. I knew if I could manifest change within myself, that I could then influence others to do the same. You know, share with me how it feels to know that you are making that difference in other people's lives. Well, it makes me really happy for them because I don't know that we can fully be who we were meant to be if we're obscured in dead foods, in the negative energy that comes with lack of self-care. Um, I know I couldn't. When I was 204 pounds, suffering from um, heart palpitations, and I also had some, I'm pretty sure I was pre-diabetic. I hadn't been diagnosed, but I had all the hypoglycemic atta attacks. I, I couldn't see who I was. I couldn't feel who I was. I couldn't connect with what was possible within me. So it's exciting for me to know that when I work with people, I can help them peel away the layers that have been basically obscuring them from their true best selves. I love that. Helping people see their true best self. Fantastic. Tuska, share with us, how do you want to be perceived today? Girl on fire. <laughs> well, maybe what they don't know is that in the last few years with I call the dark period that's happened to me, uh, losing Robert, losing my son, um, having to bankrupt his business, um, having to sell my house, knowing that there's really nothing left of my old life, that from all of that devastation, much like the fires in Fort McMurray, underneath that, underneath the darkness and the ashes, there's still me. I'm coming back and I'm growing and I'll be stronger and I'll be a new version of myself, which I think is truer and fuller and, and the person who I was always meant to be. So it's been uh, it's been a hard hard few years, but you're a remarkable human being, Tuska, and I just admire you so much. Tuska, there's another quote that you share and I really love it and it goes like this. I knew that if I could manifest change in myself, I could do it in others. There was always this inner knowing with you. Tell me about that. I had someone do some energy work on me once and they said, you know, you're an extremely cosmic person. And you know, I grew up in a traditional, strict Dutch Roman Catholic family. Don't talk about cosmic anything, right? Just get your job done, do well in school, etc. cetera. Um, but I've always had these really powerful instincts that have guided me. I remember, you know, meeting Bob, for example, for the first time. There's a lot in life you can't control, and the opportunity was in front of me. I didn't know who he was from Adam, and it was a magnificent opportunity, and I thought, you know what? 
absolute abandon, I'm going to follow this. I have a feeling that this is going to be an amazing experience for me and I'm going to ride that. And so I feel like that intuitiveness has, has guided me in many ways. I haven't gotten it right every time, but then we're also supposed to fail now and then. So we get the contrast, you know? <laughs> so I find that being 100% in myself, regardless of what that self looks like, feels like, behaves like at that moment, gives me the ability to have empathy, be very empathic to others. And empathy is one thing, but compassion is even bigger. Because with compassion, you take action. And uh, it feels like we are very much in this universe right now being asked to lean in and deliver. And that's what I feel I'm called to do. I love that. I love how you share compassion requires action. It's fantastic. Tosca, you're inspiring people through a lot of very cool and very unique vehicles you know some of these new vehicles like PBS tell me tell me a bit about some of the more inspiring vehicles that you're using now well I think PBS is uh, exciting um, because to be offered a series now with with that uh, huge demographic I mean that's amazing is is um, First of all, it's a bit staggering because they just don't offer new, new shows anymore. But secondly, it's a very different approach to uh, fitness and wellness. And the fact that I get to be part of it is, is pretty intriguing because now what we're doing in that PBS demographic is focusing on that older set of the population, right? Who are 50s and beyond. They're not the 20 years old. They're not the 30 years old. And so I feel like there's that's a great gift to be able to be able to identify with the age, but also that, hey, I know what I can put my 57 year old body through. And I don't want to hear that, you know, you're too tired or too old or too broken. Give me 10 minutes. I'll warm you up and I'm going to make you feel fabulous. <laughs> You know, you're a true difference maker, Tuska, and I love this eat clean revolution that you've created and the change that you're making in the world. Tell us about that. Well, I mean, <laughs> eating clean, first of all, saved my life. Um, as I told you, being obese, clinically obese, I weighed 204 pounds. And knowing that my father had that gene in him to die early of heart disease and that I could be next, knowing that I was having blood, blood sugar dysregulation and being depressed, just being not well, not being my optimal self. Um, eating clean really solved all those problems for me. And I felt it was revolutionary at the time because I knew I needed to lose weight, but the only way I knew how to do that was put my running shoes on and go. And I was dead wrong. That was only one small piece of it. But I think most people didn't understand that. And so when when it became so that the books were a global phenomenon with millions sold, we have uh, publications in Germany and in Italy um, and all over the all over the world. It's clear that there was a need for the message. And so because it came from my experience, because it came from practicality, because it came from truth, it was of service to so many. And that's why it was, I think, easy for people to listen. Um, and when I was on uh, Dr. Oz in 2014, he was the one who coined it the Eat Clean Revolution. And I thought, okay, thanks, Oz. <laughs> um, but the value of it is that it's for everyone. Okay, I love that. I love how you share the energy of everyday people. And you seem to really resonate, Tuska, with the energy of definers and everyday people doing extraordinary things. Tell me about that. Well, I am an ordinary person. I think that is my core truth. My authentic self is the best way for me to, to help others. And so I show up every day as I am. And I, I identify very strongly with women who've been in positions of lack or of depression or something that doesn't feel abundant in their souls. And I so much want to help them because I know just with a few small changes how to do that and how amazing it feels to show up in your own skin and love that life as a result. So um, I, I will always put my arm around my sister in strength and wellness. I will always be there. I will always be her guide and her, her best friend because I will tell you the truth and I will walk the walk with you and I will do it with you. 
not just talk it, not just preach about it. I'm going to be there. And so, you know, I'm, I'm a factor in those people's lives. I answer their emails, I blog, I have my social media, I have my books, I seek other ways to reach out, as we talked about before. And um, best, the best fun is when I get to meet them in person. As you know, Tuska, we're launching this issue of Definers at the upcoming Camp Fit Pro in Toronto, the World Fitness Expo. So you're going to be there and you're presenting. What's your message going to be? That wellness, which it embraces fitness, is never a fixed point on a scale. It is a moving target on a continuum and that wellness will be something that's a process, a journey that we're always trying to achieve the best results in. So what I mean by that is people think that wellness is, okay, I'm fit today, that's it. Don't have to do any more. But we know that once we've done three weeks of exercise, your body's figured it out. They're on to you and the body changes. The cells are so wise, right? And then we also know that when we go to a different environment, our body responds. Our, our microbial matter deep inside of our belly changes in response to wherever we are. You know, we can think about ways that that's not pleasant with traveler's uh, diarrhea and so on, but what I mean by that is our, our, even our wellness changes, even our immune system changes. So we are not, human beings are not a fixed point. Um, and so to accept that that's part of the process and to be inspired to stay ahead of the curve, to, to play with the waves of knowledge as we go is part of how we become our optimal well selves. And so for me, part of that journey has been, we all know I was born in the pages of Oxygen Magazine. That's where my career began. And so it was all about the abs and the butt and the booty and you know all that. And that was great, but I found it lacking. And I think that's a piece that's been percolating for me since, especially since Bob has passed is maybe I'm not 100% the oxygen girl anymore. I am a relevant woman because I've adapted to the changes, I've aged, and here's what works for me for fitness today. So what is that? Well, I work with weights, yes, but most of my training is is explosive. It's, it's burst training, high intensity intervals, having the courage, you know, at 57 to still run flat out, even if that's only for a minute and a half, taking a rest and doing it again. Pushing yourself past pain and discomfort in the gym. It's only for a little while. So my, my workouts are very intense and full of variety. Tabatas, intervals, resistance training, spin, lots of cardio. And that's, plus I love rebounding. Don't even get me started. <laughs> because for me, rebounding helps us as we get older develop that powerful sense of proprioception where we are in three-dimensional space and develops all of our core muscles, our stabilizer muscles, so that as we get older, when our balance is a little off, we can rely on that core strength to keep us upright and mobile. And I think that's really important. <laughs> I love that. I got to start doing some rebounding. I love how you share this energy around humans are not a fixed point and your health and wellness is not a fixed point. It's always moving. I love that. And it's interesting because we know that, you, you know, you mentioned you're an architect. Well, the body in an amazing feat of architecture, renews itself every seven years. Uh, that blows me away. And some tissues faster than others, right? Eyes, for example, but anyway. <laughs> Tosca, you've done a lot, you've achieved a lot, you've seen a lot, you've been through so much change, and you haven't stopped. And I want to ask you this important question. What will they say about you? How did Tuska live her life? What will your family say? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> you asked the good ones. <laughs> okay. I think that they would say that I lived my life fearlessly, that I was authentic. I didn't pretend to be something. I'm not a fraudster. I'm extremely generous, almost to a fault. <laughs> um, that I find it difficult to ask for help. <laughs> Everything's not all perfect. Um, and that I'm, I can be very happy with simple things. I push hard, I drive hard, I defy um, 
the status quo. I refuse to age, think, or fall into any traps that, that we should age this way or be this way because of a particular number of years that you've lived. I don't buy that. And uh, that I, I do things that probably much younger people would do. As I say, the running, the sw exercising hard and fearlessly. Um, I like to play in the dirt. It gives me great pleasure. Um, I have an 81-year-old mother who just doesn't understand why I like to play in the dirt, but of course that's my grounding and I'm getting my microbes in. Um, talented writer, compassionate, loving, extremely loving, um, great friend, true best friend, uh, guiding light, deep and caring mother, resilient, physically strong. <laughs> I can lift heavy. I'm kind of proud of that. <laughs> I think I can change people. I, I think I move people off the mark. I'm, I'm provocative because they, I ask them to do things that are potentially fearful for them, but I have complete faith that they can. So, passionate. <laughs> passionate. I give everything of myself. I give everything. Intelligent, warm, loyal. I'm going to be a great grandmother <laughs> in a few months, yeah. And I, you know, I'm a bit uh, self-deprecating. I will, I'll take myself down occasionally. I'm funny when I talk. I, I, I don't want to be the preacher. I just, I want to be the storyteller. So I'm a storyteller. I think I like to think that I have that, the touch of a storyteller that takes complicated subject matter and weaves it into a tale that we can digest easily. I love that you will be remembered for all of that and so much more. Tosca, what is the one thing that you love about you? Well, it's kind of courage and that I have long legs. <laughs> Tosca Reno, I call it nourishing the world. It's on the inside cover of the newest issue of Definers, the top 50 health and wellness tips. Tosca, we're so honored, so excited, and we just wish you an absolutely extraordinary next chapter. Thank you so much for being a part of Definers, everyday people doing extraordinary things. 